Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kao Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. I remember once we had flames at Obanikoro, and then I heard there were armed robbers going around, even to churches. I said, eh, I am here. Armed robbers going to churches. That is the worst insult that anybody can give to me. They are in an environment. And armed robbers are there. And they have not surrendered. Oh, I'm in an environment. Full of new heads, men are operating. Never. More can never. They will pray, they will be caught. Except I'm not in that environment. I make my boast in Christ Jesus. So, they ask the police. You remember on the Kuroduro then, where people normally pass. They put a police vehicle there. And the armed robbers will watch. When the police vehicle leaves, they start all over again. They were attacking people. And collecting. I said, no, it's a spirit. So I bound that spirit. So you demon. Stealing through people in this environment. I bind you in Jesus' name. I crippled it. I cast it out of the environment. The next day, one tried to rob. It was caught and killed. The next day, another two were caught and killed. And then the next day, another was caught and killed. And that was the end of robberies. Why? The king of Tyre has been dislodged. The prince of Tyre can no longer prosper. Rise with me. Let's come against the demon. Walking with this full and headsman. Anywhere you are. Don't say I'm free in Lagos. You are family traveling. You don't even need to know anybody. You are a human being. They are not human beings. They don't have a heart of you. They have the heart of demons. Heartless things. Demons. I cast the spirit that is working through the Fulani headsmen in Nigeria. I bind their king in the name of Jesus. I stop all the oppressions Amen. in the realm of the spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All the oppressions in the spirit realm. Giving them cover. I dislodge it in Jesus name. Amen. When Daniel was praying, he said, the prince of Persia came to hold him down. He said, Michael said, the prince of Persia didn't let me come to give you what God sent me for you. Can you see? The prince of Persia has helped me for 21 days. God gave me something for you. There are people that God has given you things. Those demons in the atmosphere, they just hold the angel, and the angel can't pass until the warring angels. That one took 21 days. Do you know how long your home will take? It may be shorter, it may be longer, but me, I'm very impatient in the spirit. I'm very impatient. I'm very impatient. The supplies they take from the spirit realm, I cut it off in Jesus' name. The, mo the weapons that have been supplied with in the spirit realm, I destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. In Psalm 46, it says he burns the chariots in fire, breaks the spear, cut the arrow. Those are weapons of fear. He causes war to end. I command this war by this full and man over innocent citizens of this country. I command it to end. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I release peace Amen. over this nation. Amen. It's the kingdom of God. Say the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, that peace, that kingdom, that rule and over all. In the book of Daniel, he said, Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, you are that image. The stone built with their hands is the kingdom of God. He smashed that image to pieces. I smashed their kingdom. I smash it to pieces. Amen. It will not prosper. Amen. It will not excel. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From now on, each time they try to act, the angel of God will resist them. Amen. The angel of God will intercept them. Amen. The angel of God will fight them. Amen. Their mission will fail. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says it's a righteous thing with God. To put trouble in the life of those. Affliction. In the life of those that trouble you, their leaders, wherever they may be, these are your portion from now on. Cancer, Amen. madness, 
Bible says he make diviners what? Mad. I decree madness. Confusion. The Bible says and of mob. Each one took a sword against himself and they killed themselves. From now on, you are the Tower of Babel. Amen. Begin to fight yourself. Amen. Begin to kill yourself. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then those headsmen, the physical ones, I deliver them to Satan. Amen. Angel of death. I saw you coming. You're under my authority. I work for you. I have food to give you. <laughs> I summon the angel of death. All those full headsmen, eat their flesh. Amen. Drink their blood. Amen. Let them be meat for Satan. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let Satan grow fat on them. Amen. Let his belly get big on them. Amen. Let his cheeks be robust on them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He said to the serpent, Dust you will eat. And he said to man, Dust you are. So serpent eats flesh of man. I have handed the flannel headsman as food to Satan and his agents. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is done. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, the church is not backboneless. The church is not weak. The church will rise and confront the evil of this day. In the name of Jesus. We are the sons of God. We have a reason. We will take what belongs to our God. We will take what belongs to our Father. We will redeem that name. The name Jesus. The name above every other name. Amen. And at the mention of that name, the headsmen will bow Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Write it down. What is today's date? From today, they no longer Amen. have a free cost to operate. Amen. I have spoken it. They will no longer operate Amen. as if they are unchecked. If the police don't arrest them, angels will face them. Angels will slaughter them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You can be seated. Praise God. So the Lord says, the kingdom of darkness is rampaging all over the earth. He says, Satan is like a roaring lion walking to and fro. What are those spirits doing? They're walking to and fro. Doing what? Seeking whom to devour. In Luke 13, from 11 to 13, the Bible says a woman was bound 18 years, was Satan. And Jesus said, thou art loose from this thy infirmity. He said, ought not this woman who was bound by Satan be loose on the Sabbath? Satan was behind it. He's behind most of those illnesses. All those young men sleeping and not wake up, he's behind it. Not all sickness are from Satan. Some are physiological some are um, biological, some are purely medical, and some are spiritual, and some are a combination of the two. For example, in Proverbs 17, I need to let you understand so that people don't get into, we're looking at the seven things to look out for in a mate, and I said you have to be careful of extremism, extremism. You can have extremism in deliverance. Everything is Satan. You can have extremism in faith. You don't need drugs. That's extreme. The Bible says that he has made herbs for the service of mankind. It is wrong for your faith to be in drugs. Your faith should be in God. Who causes the drugs to work? But it is wrong to say you don't need drugs when you are sick. There's nothing wrong in taking drugs if you are sick. It is no lack of faith to take drugs if you are sick. But it's lack of faith to put all your confidence in the drugs and not in God. Who make it the drugs to work? Whether synthetic or steroids, drugs are still made from plants. That's why we call it 
um, botany and all biochemistry, they're from plants. And it's a food. And it's God who blesses your bread, your food, and your water and causes it to prosper in your body to give life. Amen? Amen. Praise Jesus. So in Proverbs 17, 22, for example, he tells us that a merry heart do it good like medicine, but a broken spirit dry the bones. So if someone has arthritis, you don't have to say Satan. It could be because you have a broken spirit. You are always downcast, depressed. Thinking negative is enough to cause arthritis. So don't blame that on Satan if you don't have a merry heart. Another example, I just need to show this to balance because some people tell you every sickness is from Satan. No, most sickness is from Satan, but there are still few sicknesses that is not from Satan. In Psalm 35, Psalm 35, I read from verse 9 to 10. My soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? Who delivereth the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. So, to be joyful in the Lord can affect your bones. That's what the same thing is saying there. A merry heart. So, if you have a good spirit, if you have an open spirit, if you have a lively spirit, it will affect your health. If you have a depressing spirit, it will affect your health. So, that's not Satan. But Satan is behind most of it. Now, Satan can be behind the depression to cause Arthritis. I guess I'll leave that, but let me, maybe I should just mention one more. Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, verse 30. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. So, if someone is envious, if you are envious of people and the bones get rotten and there's cancer in the bone, that's nobody's fault. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Paul said a messenger was dispatched from Satan to ensure that the abundance of the revelation that I have does not get me so exalted that the whole world will come under my command. People think, no, people miss it. They say, they say, the messenger of Satan is for God, Paul, Paul not to be prideful. No, 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 no. He said, he can be so exalted without abundance. You heard what King Agrippa said. King Agrippa said, you almost made me a Christian. He said, oh, Paul, this is, this is something. It's as if you're beside yourself. He was tattooed. He's never had such preaching in his life. He said, you almost made me a Christian. So what Paul is saying that this revelation is so much that if I have a free course to preach it, the whole world will be under my command and tutelage. But Satan was sent to make sure that did not happen. And that actually did not happen. Why? Paul did not know how to deal with it. How? He was praying. He was praying. Eventually, he knew what to do, but he was quite old. And that's why you now read in Acts 28. The Bible says in Acts 28, don't worry about my notebook, it's old. It's old because I've been reading for a long time. Even, you know, there are some things in some places, the archives, they like it old. They call it antique. Antique. And this one won't help you. All these tablets won't help you with that. So I guess once in a while I still need this one to make you know that I've been reading this thing for long ago. Praise God. In Acts 28, 30 to 31, the Bible says, And Paul dwelt in his own house, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, no one disturbing him. So he had dealt with the messenger of Satan. Or he prayed, it didn't go. Some you need to pray. Some tasks, some operations. We look at seven of such operations from the kingdom of darkness. Seven. One of them is the messenger of Satan. That's what we're dealing with today. Assassins sent specifically for one particular assignment. It's not two. 
We call it recurring decimals in families. One, they get to a particular age. It's either they have cancer or they die. Another one is, you can see the trait. It's called messenger of Satan. Some call it generational curse. There is no generational curse in the life of a Christian. There's no. He said, the soul that sinneth shall die. But there are messengers of Satan that can be sent to a family and ensure that this happens each time this happens to this, this happens, this happens, this happens. And they are fasting and praying and it's still happening. In Acts 13, Verse 1 to 2, I just want to establish briefly what this messenger was sent to do in the life of Paul. From verse 1, long reading, but I want to cut it short, 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 so I can go to um, an example I want us to look at. In Acts 13, 1 to 12, um, sorry, let me, I can't start from verse 1, it's taking too long. And from verse 6. Paul and his crew had gone through the hours onto Papos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas, the sorcerer, foresaw his name by interpretation, which to them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. I said something about the spirit of faith. You know, me and seven have come. There are seven authorities you will address by the spirit of faith. The Bible says, Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on the man and said, Oh, full of all subtlety, all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee. You shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. Immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. He went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. So what happened? He withstood Paul. If you notice the mistake of Paul, he lives there when they were standing. Then they go back and wait for him. This one never tried it when he went blind. All those that, the Lord will trouble them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, they won't have time for you again. Amen. It's trouble upon trouble. Amen. Disaster upon disaster. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That was operation of a messenger of Satan to withstand Paul. Or crippled what he was using. Immediately. I said, be blind. And the person who was sent to receive the gospel. And there was peace everywhere. In that same Acts 13, if you go further down, you find again the same thing happening. Paul was going to, I, 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 I don't want to start reading everything one after the other. But I'll tell you where they are. And then you see where Satan, always using the Jews, not the Gentiles, the Jews. Let me read from verse 42. Again, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. When the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue the grace of God. And the next Sabbath came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. When the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. For seeing that you put it from you, judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles. That should us be for salvation. So it was the Jews that were opposing him here. He's still that messenger of Satan. He is, they call him the assassin of Satan. The assassin of Satan. He has one assignment and one target and one oppression and one, just one job. He doesn't do two. You know when assassins go to uh, uh, tax, they don't take money. They take the life and go. His job is to stop Paul from preaching using the Jews. And if you go through Acts 14, Acts 16, Acts 17, all you will find. Let me read from Acts 14, 1 to 12, Acts 14, 19 to 21. The Jews stopped Paul. Acts 16, 11 to 34, 
the Jews stopped Paul. Acts 17, 1 to 14, the Jews stopped Paul. But in Acts 28, the messenger of Satan had been crippled. No one stopped him. And the same people that stopped him before were still around. 1 Samuel 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. It's another long reading. It came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. Ziglag and smitten Ziglag burned it with fire. Are taking the women captives, they were therein, they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. Behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. If you're under any form of oppression and you have been weeping, stop it. Stop it. Don't weep again. And I, I also prophesy your time of weeping has come to an end. Yeah. Verse 5. David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam the Jezreelite and Abigail the wife of Nabal the Camelite. David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiata, the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiata brought hither the ephod to David. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. Everybody say it together, say, Pursue. Then he said, for thou shalt surely say overtake. overtake. And without fail, recover. Say recover all. Recover. And you know the story. David went with 600 men that were with him. Or should this demonic congregation. He had his pause with him. I told you, some of you here. When Saul was killed, Saul's son first sat on that throne and was ruling. He was an illegal ruler. The throne was for David. And there are people, Satan has taken their throne, their resources, caged their life in a box. Taking their health, taking their finances, their family, taking everything. Do you know what he's doing when he takes all those things? The Bible says in verse 15, David said to a man that he met on the road, he said he was of the camp of the Amalekites, and he said, do you know where they are? He said, I can take you to where they are. And he brought him down, sorry, in verse 15, and he said, swear unto me by God that you neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I'll bring thee down to this company. When he brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating, drinking, and dancing. Because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. So Satan has held parties because of some people. That lady that sings, don't worry. We have captured her voice, captured her fame, captured everything. So what is he doing? He's sitting and rejoicing. Actually, what he wanted to do with the body of Moses was that he wanted to take that body to hell and display. Now, 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 you know, I've been to a rich man's house before. He had about four sitting rooms. When you enter the first sitting room, it's big. You have leather seats. Then he has a second sitting room where he meets with general, no, not general people, few special people. Then he has a third sitting room up the next floor. 
special, not very big. Guess what the carpet is like? Is what? The skin of a tiger. Guess what the seat is made of? The skin of a male lion with the head on top. People love trophies. Have you ever seen somebody use the skin of a squir uh, squirrel for his chair? Will you tell you, come and look at my chair? The skin is made of rabbits. Have you ever seen it before? Never. But if he makes the chair from the skin of a male lion, he's very proud. He can even tell you that I killed the lion, right? In my young days, when I used to go hunting, people were afraid of one lion was harassing the populace. I took my rifle, and I went into the forest. In those days, we don't know fear like you boys of nowadays. I sighted the lion. He charged towards me. I cocked my rifle. When I fired, he jumped in me. I dodged. If you look at the cut here, that's why I pierced a sword. I had a knife. Pierced it like this. Then shot it dead. Then skin, then took the skin. That's the skin you are sitting on. Then he sits on it. Crosses his leg. Would you like to drink wine? <laughs> Uh, and if it's a dog, it's not those, those street dogs. You will come and you, you yourself won't sit on a street dog skin. Dog that they kept on the street. You won't sit on it. Don't forbid. It has all those kind of infection, you know. Praise God. But if it's a special dog, you know, this dog is a special breed. They bred it in Australia. There's a town in Australia. It mentions, have you heard of it before? There are only eight of them in, the, in this world. By the time I got this one, there were just four left. It cost me $30,000 because it's a rare species. It no longer exists. Men love trophies. Satan wanted to take Moses' body as a trophy. The man that harassed all my demons in Egypt, I've captured him. The man that humiliated me in Egypt, I've captured him. The man that made me ridicule before all the nations in the promised land, Jericho and the rest. Here he is. Then he will hang his head on the wall, just up his throne, then he will sit. And he would, here lies Moses, the prophet of the almighty God. Then the people will hail him, hail Lucifer! So only you could conquer, so yeah, conquered Moses. Then you mention all the big names he has conquered. I conquered Samson, that general. He doesn't mention the Lazarus, the poor man he conquered. Though. No, he doesn't mention that one, no. He conquered the well-known names. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.